and welcome to episode one of By George from Page to Stage. So, Rich, what's episode one going to be looking like? Well, first things first, we've got to find our cast, Matt. And at the moment, we've got to, uh, we've got about a month, as we record this, about a month to go before we have the auditions. Ooh. Yeah, it's a tense time because, <laughs> uh, well, for someone who's, you know, laboured over, over this project for a little while, um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how people put their own spin on it. Yeah. I've sent out audition material uh, to people and they've uh, come back and said, well, how do you want this and how do you want that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I genuinely don't, don't want any input at this point. All I want to do is say, this is the material. Just work with it how you want. So the auditions are going to be uh, on Easter Sunday. Right. Um, we're also accepting video auditions. Uh, so Because we understand it's a difficult time for people if they're going away. And, uh, and it's quite short notice to rearrange everything for an Easter Sunday mm. uh, if you have to fit in an audition. But nevertheless, that's our day. We're going to do it at the Lawrence Batley Theatre. And it should be a fun day. Nice. I'm I'm really really excited about it. You know, with with a with a month to go, my level of excitement is going up and up and up. And I up. think there's a lot of people excited about it. I mean, I'm Absolutely. getting asked questions left, right, and centre. Yeah. You know, what's happening with the show? What's happening with the podcast? And obviously, the whole reason I'm here is to learn about the show. So, learning about the auditions process is something that obviously I've never really seen from your perspective. I've yeah. always been the one auditioning for shows, and it's quite rare that people get to audition at the actual theatre they'll be performing at, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I've auditioned people professionally, mm. but I've never done it with a society. Yeah. Um, th this one uh, is, is a co-production between WMTC, Woodhouse yeah. Musical Theatre Company, yeah. and the LBT, Lawrence Batley Theatre. So uh, I've never done that approach before where you've got people from the society doing it. But I've done it professionally, where you've got people whose money is on the line. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So I'm hoping there'll be a more relaxed atmosphere. It should be interesting. I mean, I suppose the, the other thing as well is that when you're auditioning people who, uh, you know, like you say, the money's on the line, they're professional actors, all of them. The difference here is that primarily the cast is going to be made up of people who have either only ever done amateur productions mm. or have some professional experience but in this circumstance i'm assuming you know that they're they're not auditioning for a paid role oh they're, no it's they're not auditioning paid. very much for That's being right. a part of um you know world premiere of, of your own musical yeah but it's it's very much still part of an amateur society but there's a joy in amateur theater oh yeah that you sometimes don't get uh, in professional theater yeah having been um a Trained as a musician, I, my degree is in music. Mm. The one thing I said when I left university was that I would never do music for money. Ever, <laughs> ever. In, actually, that's all I ever did because I, 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 I worked out that I found out that I still loved it. even though. I, but, but it was my solemn promise. I said I will never do this for money because I yeah, love yeah. it so much. Yeah. And um, so I, it, the flip side is that returning to amateur theatre is it takes away the money aspect completely. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. I love it because people are actually doing it for the love of it. Yeah, exactly. We're in a production at the moment of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. It's, <laughs> as, we, as we record this, it's going to be going on the, uh, in two weeks. So how is it looking in terms of, you said people could obviously video audition because you know, you're very conscious that, especially people from this society, yeah. as you say, they'll have only just finished doing Priscilla. And then they'll have, what, a couple of weeks, really, to prepare for, for well, barely a couple of weeks to prepare see, for the audition. You say prepare. I don't want people to prepare too much for auditions. Oh, right. No, uh, because I think, especially with, with a new show, how are they supposed to know? How, how there's is no someone, reference point. No, there's yeah. no reference point at all. How are people supposed to know and come to it? What they can do is learn the material. Yeah. That's great. And then we can uh, be a bit more flexible on the day and say, well, could you do it like this? And mm. could you do it like this? Try this. That's going to be the case for the auditions and the rehearsals as well, where we're trying new things and seeing, well, does this delivery work better for this person? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, I don't want people to prepare too much. So I'm very happy with the time scale. Let's get them in. I suppose you're going to organically see how people kind of interpret the words that you've written and obviously the stage directions yeah. as well, I'm assuming. But like you said, because there's no reference point, people can't just go on YouTube and watch like a... a a bootleg recording of the well, production. Well, is that or what you usually music? do? I'm if you were sure going for an is, audition, because you know? I wouldn't. Yeah, I think I think some people, especially if you're learning the music. I mean, my, I myself have an audition the day after we finish Priscilla. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, I won't say what it is in case I don't get the part. <laughs> <laughs> don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. <laughs> but, you know, I, at the moment I'm learning, well, trying to learn the audition piece based on um, my interpretation of a very well-known character. Yeah. And so because it's based on a film, um, it's it's very much an iconic kind of performance that oh. you, you're looking towards. And so you, you want to learn the script that's quite similar to the film script sure. in a way that, is your own interpretation, but also kind of has that semblance of that character that everyone knows and loves because people will go into it and probably judge you. With an expectation. With an expectation, exactly. But when you're learning the original songs as well, mm. you know, uh, especially if, like myself, you're not uh, someone who can read music by themselves, like needs quite a lot of assistance, yeah. <laughs> um, but can play an instrument so you can kind of figure things out for yourself. For, for this situation, though, it's totally different in that there's... They can listen to the recordings that you've you've given, mm. but it doesn't give them any idea of the kind of characterization that no. they're going to be able to put on their own stamp on. And they've got no idea of, you know, oh, well, someone else did it this way. They're literally creating these characters yeah. and bringing them to life. After that, the for me, is deliberate. When we put together the audition material... I, I gave the gave people as much as, as much help as I could. Yeah. Um, we we apportioned uh, what sections of the script we were going to learn and uh, and what songs we were going to throw in there. I recorded the songs uh, as a demo mm. to make sure that people knew the notes. Yeah, yeah. But really, that's it. I didn't interpret them, so there's no yeah, yeah. acting involved in, uh, in 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 putting forward the songs. I got a, a good friend, Alicia J. Brady to come round and record um, some of the songs for the females because it's in a different key. <laughs> so I just, it's just as simple as that. And so, again, Alicia had no idea about the context within the musical. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't want that. I, yeah. I don't want her to act it. I wanted to uh, to just present the notes and then people can interpret it the way that they, they would. But like you said, that puts people right out of their comfort zone yeah, yeah. because they don't have a reference point. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> So the descriptions of the characters then that, that you sent through to people, yeah. were they deliberately kind of um, just very factual? Yes. They weren't, there, were, there weren't any kind of emotional no. uh, embellishments from yourself on no. this is how you feel about that character. Yeah. It's just their age, where they're from, what their kind of standard personality traits are. Yeah, and their That's context that. within the story. Yeah. Um, the, Musicals work in stereotypes. <laughs> they do. Uh, it's I was very just about to say. Well, they, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> it gets it gets very difficult uh, to, uh, and there is a reason musicals work in stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. Because the songs actually get in the way somehow of the storytelling. Mm. They heighten emotion, but they don't. They very rarely forward a story. It's like taking a break from the story to have a song. Yeah. So that slows things down. Therefore, in order to get the story and the characters across, you need to have a certain amount of stereotyping to begin with. Mm. And I think this musical achieves that. My previous ones did as well. They were all caricatures, every yeah. single one. With this one, there is at least a little heart to a story. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how people come up with, uh, with their own take on, on what I think is, is a stereotypical role. <laughs> they may view it completely the other way. In fact, when we were doing table reads, there was a character called Harry. Yep. Harry started as a nondescript character who just chucked in uh, little bon mots occasionally. And just that, that little word that everyone, the, the whole audience is thinking, but he says it. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't have a filter. And uh, both people who, who read the Harry role at the, uh, the read-throughs had very different takes on it, but it was funny both times. So we know that works. So, um, you, had, so you had different people reading at Table Read 1? Yes. Visit table read, there, there was no, none of the same people? No. Nope, not was, recasting a different role nope. to see? They were all different and they all different. came to it yeah, fresh. Yeah. And it was exactly the right thing to do. Yeah. Because we couldn't believe how different the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the reads were of exactly the same material, effectively. Auditions. What do we need? Well, um, we have certain parts that we, we know need to be really, really strong. Yeah. And so those have got a lot more audition material right. than the others. Um, the, the key character for us is Pauline. She is the, the heroine of the whole piece. She's an extraordinary character in that she's really, really warm and tries so hard. But she comes from, uh, from a position that's really, really low. Mm. Um, she's been belittled by her husband constantly and is trodden on by life. 
she goes to the gym to try and improve herself, but it, it, that's not the, the, the way she needs to improve herself. She finds that out during the first act. Right. She then hits an all-time low when her son has gone behind her back to become a stripper. <laughs> and she discovers him while he's stripping. So uh, that's kind of the end of Act One, and it's a real low point for her, but she makes a conscious decision at the end of Act One to change her life Mm. and get something which is very important, agency, to get control over her whole life. Yeah. And so that's the character arc that we've got, and it's Pauline's character arc that carries the whole story. So she has to be a really important casting decision for us. So she's effectively... I know that obviously... It's by George is the name of it. Yeah. George is, is the kind of, you know, it's the patriarch, he's the symbol of the That's show. Right. But it sounds like Pauline was very much written as not just a leading lady who's, you know, by the side of, of the leading man, yeah. but she's the forefront, she is the show. Yeah. yeah, she is the title character because she's the one that's by but, George. Um, so Clever guy. <laughs> Hardly. But it's it's taken me too, too long to figure that out. <laughs> but, I mean, George's role is quite minor. He's the stereotype. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah. the person that everyone thinks she's kicking against. More beginning. grunts than lines. Very much so. <laughs> and so George is difficult to cast as well. Yeah. Because George has to, has to bounce off Pauline. Mm. So once you've cast Pauline, you've got to find someone who can be not just her equal, but someone she can not only um, be submissive to, I suppose mm. you'd say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also need her to be absolutely dominant of him by the end. So, so she's got to do it. She's got to shift. do the flip, yeah, but yeah. also he's got to respond to that. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's a character in itself to find. Therefore, uh, we've, we've positioned the, the audition material so that they can find that. Let's play you some of the audition material. Great. Let's play you some of George's audition material. Uh, this is a song called This Is My England. No man without valor from land, sea, or sky shall conquer. storm cries its beacon shall light it roars at the thunder and never shall die for this is my England my England and I no man without power from land sea or sky We've had a listen to one of the songs that we're going to hear in By George from the title character George and we've learned about Pauline, how important she is to the story and how it develops the plot throughout the musical. Mm. So we've, looked, we've talked about George, we've talked about Pauline. Natural progression for me is to talk about their son Sam. So yeah. what are you looking for in Sam? How old is he? What, what's his character traits? Well, Sam simply has to be over 18 because of the nature of the role but also young enough to be Pauline's kid. Yeah. So who again, whoever we cast as Pauline has to be believable as the mother of mm. Sam. We have some very strong people f- who are going for the part of Sam. I can't believe how, how, much, how much talent we've got actually uh, coming towards this production. Incidentally, there is still time for people to audition uh, if, if, uh, or get audition material. There's tons of time. We've, we've got, you know, when, by the time this podcast goes out, there'll be three and a half weeks. 
in order to to get the material. We'll put links in the description, etc. It's all going to be there. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Sam uh, needs to be uh, needs to be between eighteen and twenty six, something like that. That's me. Out. Sorry, kiddo. <laughs> oh. Too old. Well, <laughs> think how I feel. <laughs> when I started writing this, Sam would have been my character. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how long ago this is. Look at this now. <laughs> so, um, I look like a bean Fine bag. specimen won't have anything no, said bad about I you. I look like a bin bag full of yoghurt. <laughs> I could never be a stripper. I'm sorry. There's no way that's going to happen. Okay. So, Sam. Back um, to Sam. Yeah. He needs a good voice. <clears throat> he's got to yeah. be able to sing. Um, because um, one, of the, one of his character arcs is, is that he becomes a singer. Um, rather, he, he, he goes away from the stripping right. by his own decision, nothing okay. to do with his mom. You know, he decides, and so this again is all about agency. And he becomes a singer, so yep. therefore he has to be a believable stage presence. But also, he has to be believable as someone you'd find in the chip shop helping out. That's quite a yes. mix, isn't it? So it's he's, quite a he's a singer, stripper. Yep. Fish and chip shop boy. Yep. Is is he at college or is he finished all that? He's just working full time in the fish and chip this shop. This boy ain't an educated boy. Sorry, but bless him. Well, <laughs> no, some people just don't go for that, and quite right. It's expensive these days. <laughs> That's if you got a family business. It's exactly a role to slot into. Isn't yeah, it? don't have to write a CV. This is true. So no, not a college boy, but you know. I, I, as he goes through, he gets really aspirational, and you realise that um, that he's got this this feeling of willing to progress. Yeah, and get out of that damn chippy. <laughs> so um, that's how that's how Sam's character works. There are other characters around the orbit of the family, but they are the centre, mm. the main character that's outside that orbit and is trying to disrupt the whole family. Is a lady called Marge. And we know about Marge, don't we? we? Yeah, Marge is um, <laughs> Marge is an interesting character, and especially one to audition. Yeah, there are a couple of uh, caveats to Marge's audition. Okay, because she has to sit inside a wheelie bin for about three minutes. Jeez. Yeah, it's quite a warm, dark environment. It will be with the lights. Oh yeah. Yeah. You have a roast Marge by the time she comes out. <laughs> Roasting Marge is one of the pleasures of this script because, again, <laughs> you've got this huge build-up of this character who is. Awful. I mean, she's <laughs> awful. She's um, a social media, um, you'd call her an entrepreneur, but that, there really isn't any money involved. Mm. She's just there for the gossip. Yeah, yeah. And she's worked her way through husbands quite legitimately to get their cash. She's a, 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 a pariah, a parasite. She's, she and she's one like of the handful. funnest characters I've ever written. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Did you have, because I remember you mentioned. Uh, in in the preview episode, you mentioned that obviously George had inspiration from your own fish and chip shop, yeah. and then also maybe a little bit of um, I don't know characteristics traits from other grumpy Yorkshire men yeah. of various establishments. I know I can relate to a few of those genuinely nice people deep yeah. down, but with a rough, harsh exterior. But yeah. did, did Marge have any inspiration from? No, I, you cannot point to it. Thank goodness. You can't point to anyone <laughs> in my life who is a Marge. However, when you trawl social media yeah. and, and you look at the worst excesses of social media, of Twitter, of Facebook, yeah. and how silly people get about it, she's the, she's the she's ul a, ultimate epitome of that. She's a carrot. Day. Yeah, I don't like that because <laughs> my poor, everyone who's named Karen, the poor people, you know, oh, she's a Karen. But yeah, Mar Marge, is, Marge is a Karen. A social media troll. Yeah, she's, she's horrible, but she's inevitable mm -hmm. and she's also irresistible. She's such good fun to play. I, yeah. I can, I, you know, I'd love to play her, but sadly, you know, that ain't in my frock on. No. <laughs> Same thing with do the stripper thing. <laughs> do you think that auditioning for any of these roles, so oh, I, I suppose we haven't really established, mm. uh, are you on the audition panel? We've not actually addressed that. I, I'm there as an advisory, right. just to say, uh, just to point people and say, right, um, what we're actually looking for here is something a little more uh, performative or something less performative. Mm. Um, and, and I can help lead the performance as they're doing the, um, doing the audition. 
but I'm not there with a vote. I right. don't. I'm, I'm, it's not my production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just there as the writer. Yeah. I, I'm. I suppose I'm a handy person to have around. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not taking that kind of decision because it isn't my production. Does that, does that make sense? No, absolutely. So I guess in that sense, then um, having auditioned for shows for Woodhouse before, obviously, um, as I said, never been on the the panel side, but mm. being on the uh, auditionee side, you know, your experience of, of when you do an audition is sometimes, especially when it's your first show with a society, mm. you go in, you might not know any of the faces making the decision. Yeah. You might think, I don't know who that person is, what their experience is, what they're looking for. You know, you're very much going in just with your interpretation of, of what you've prepared, what you've, what you've read. Yeah. So it's a very new experience and we'll say this a lot in every single episode there's a lot of new things that are happening but yeah. that's what makes this so special right is that you know I, I can't think of any other situation in an amateur um society or amateur theater kind of position especially that you'd be able to go into an, an audition and the writer of the production is sat there not necessarily deciding on who's getting the part yeah. but there to kind of help people to play around with the role and see potentially a totally different way that the writer never even thought of it. It's, it's quite a, an interesting experience. So but would you find that intimidating? It would be very difficult to feel intimidated because everyone's invested in wanting to be a part of the production from the start. That's mm. the whole reason they're there. Yeah. And as you say, because you've removed, or, or because that issue of I need to get this role because it's a paid working role isn't there no. they're going in purely based on want and passion and desire and I think in that scenario if you like I said if you knew no one on the audition panel so if someone new comes to audition who's never been in a Woodhouse show before or maybe just never done a show at the LBT before in general in that situation it might be intimidating but on the flip side, people who, for example, have just done Priscilla mm. might go into it and feel a lot more relaxed about it than sure. they would for an, another show because there technically is no right or wrong. It's no. their interpretation and your opportunity to say, ooh, I like that, but do it this way a bit yeah. and see what works. And then, as, as you say, because you've not got that deciding vote, they're not trying to impress you. No. They're trying to impress the director and everybody else on the panel. That's where I think they've been very canny. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 for my first musical uh, with, with Woodhouse, that's exactly what we did. Th they said, you're not getting on the panel. You're, you're not coming anywhere near the audition because th this is something that's personal to you and you're going to, uh, uh, you know... You, you're you're like gonna bias. Put... Yeah. yeah. So, and I also auditioned for it. Yeah. I wanted a part in my own musical <laughs> and I didn't get it. So uh, they were absolutely right. No Listen, nepotism, though. No, That's absolutely. Good. And bear in mind, you, uh, what I what I shouldn't uh, shouldn't be doing is concentrating on acting. It should be concentrating on rewrites, possibly reorchestration. Yeah, yeah. This one's far more in advance than the than the other one was. Yeah. I have no idea how we got my first musical to stage. I have no idea. I don't remember it happening. I know <laughs> I was busy, and uh, and I was in the chorus for it, and and it was insane. This is far more rigid and far, it's a far better show. Thank goodness. <laughs> I wouldn't want it to be any worse. It's just, it, it just feels so much more, it feels so much more complete. Mm. I like this one. The, with, the, with the new characters, um, that, that I, I want to try and get through as many of the characters as possible for this audition special. Yeah. Um, because uh, 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 people will listen to it thinking, well, what am I going to audition for? Yeah, exactly. I'd like yeah, to be yeah. a part of it. Yeah. Who should I go for? There's a specific part called Chloe. Mm. Chloe is a balmy fitness instructor. Uh, she, she too has a character arc. She's had um, a lot of experience in, in show business and she mentors Sam. Right. So she's got to be a very, very confident, in fact, bossy woman. Yeah. I know a few of them. Can you, can, you, can, you, can you think of anyone who fits that? She's, she see. can also be quite, uh, quite, quite young. Uh, she she could be in her forties. She could be in her fifties. Yeah, yeah. But she could also. She's be got in, that youthful energy. Yeah, she could be in her twenties or thirties. So she's a very open yeah, yeah. character. She's been the most popular person for people to want to audition for yeah. because she's so open. Yeah, yeah. And she has some brilliant songs. 
absolutely brilliant. She's she's got all the powerful songs, and she starts the show after the after the setup song. Yeah, her solo is is the is the first song in the show. So she needs to be ballsy. Is it worth us listening to? Yeah, her I think solo? so. Yeah, let's have a listen to this one. This is a song that Chloe sings. Take a breath. Take a beat. There's a world full of wonder on a Yorkshire village street. There's a friendly folk who pass and say hello. Hello! Hello! Then you realise they're talking to their folk. Sorry, some git's waving at me. But the smell intervenes. It's greasy and it's glorious and it grabs you by your we're genetically programmed to pursue. pursue It's a ritual that's English through and through, and through. It's the beating heart of everything we do. we do It's a seminal, practical Stand in front to back to all traditional So we just listened to a song that Chloe sings in the show and obviously as we mentioned she's one of the bigger parts but she's also one of the younger members of the cast. Potentially, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's not exclusive. This is a musical which kind of brings in a lot of... Uh, well, I'm not going to call them old because to <laughs> me, being someone who's 48, you know, being this age doesn't feel very old to me. He's, nah. he's early 40s, he's just joking. <laughs> These aren't wrinkles, they're laughter lines. But nothing's that funny. So um, <laughs> nearly got sprayed with coffee. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a musical that actually celebrates people of my age. Mm. Um, it's born out of what a lot of people used to call midlife crisis. That's not what this is. It's someone trying to gain a bit of agency back into their lives. Yeah. I don't like the term midlife crisis because everyone just uses that as a catch-all excuse to say, oh, my life's rotten. What's happened? Oh, I'm having a midlife crisis. No, 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 no. You just lost agency in your life. Get, Plus, get some back. The important thing, as you've said before, is that you started writing this when you were at an age where you'd been able to play Sam. Yeah. Which means that you were, like, you know, late... Uh, teens or early to mid twenties. Yeah. So as a result, um, you know, have, have the characters changed in their ages? You know, I think we we've talked about it briefly in the last episode that, you know, that the primary kind of characters that you've got driving the story mm. are generally not younger, as you see with modern musicals, especially right. you know the likes of the likes of Newsies or Bonnie and Clyde, or yeah, the, Legally the, Blonde. Uh, where yeah, the West End at the moment is populated with uh, with musicals that favour young people, mm. and the older actors are generally brought in as either a cameo mm. or as comedy relief. Great, thanks for that. Or to be killed off in three Or to be things. killed off. Why do you always die? <laughs> I've died in, in, the, in uh, the last four musicals I've appeared in. Just peg out halfway through act one and that's it for me. Which is, it's fine, it's workable. But this musical can, uh, can really highlight the talent that not necessarily we have at the moment, but what we had before people went off to have kids. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and it, it, it was, there was a really great scene of, uh, of amateur musicians and performers that we had 20 years ago, mm. they can come back to this. And that's, that, that'd be wonderful. If I brought someone back from, you know, my uh, prime period before I went off to, to do cruising, <laughs> and, then, and then we came back together to do this one together. That'd be so good. The big thing for me is that comparing this to, say, f- for example, a show like Come From Away, mm. where the, the characters are based on real characters and the, there's a lot more grounding to it, yeah. but the actors playing them they don't have to conform to sizes or, um, you know, particular age ranges. That they're, they're very much they can be whoever represents those real kind of style of characters yeah. as, as you want to. Yeah, you're looking at real people. Speaking yeah. of which, uh, there are a couple of people that that people can audition for mm. uh, is someone called Lil, who is Pauline's best friend. Um, she's a great character. She's got a lot of songs. Mm. They're all pretty much the same. She's a linking mechanism. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she's, she's got some lovely lines. Um, and again, she's kind of... In the same way that Harry is to George, Lil is to Pauline. Yeah. But less cutting. She'll keep her on the straight and narrow and point her in the right direction. But she's also a good link with Marge as well because she's Marge's 
best friend too. So her role is kind of weaving in, you said, repetition. Yes. And I know that one of the things that you mentioned last time was that, um, you know, your, your musical is going to be all about kind of making people feel like they can relate. They mm. should come away from it feeling the songs were catchy and, yeah. and they get them in their heads. That repetition is part of that. It is. So for for those core characters that you've just listed, are they are they all wanting to be around the kind of same ages they would have been you know grown up in the same area they'd all have a lot of history together yeah ideally lil should again bounce off pauline pauline's the central pillar of the of yeah. this because uh, uh, her casting will dictate who is who is going to play lil and who, yeah. would, who would be believable as her best friend yeah um lil o also gets involved in in the gym going and so she's got a lot to do but uh, she's, uh, she's a character that's really supportive mm. in, in every sense of not just the plot, but of the characters too. There's another guy called Will. He's the delivery man uh, who has fancied Pauline for an awfully long time. And as he sees the, the family uh, sort of dissolve, yeah. he says, well, hang on, can I be there as someone to, to pick up the pieces? He's such a good-hearted guy as Will. And he, he, he's... Um, he wants to be part of Pauline's life, desperately. Yeah. Um, and he's the only one who really gets to sing this sort of, the, the usual love ballad. And he sings a love duet with Pauline. Oh. It's such a sweet song. Uh, yeah, Will is, uh, Will's, Will's a lovely character. So you need someone who looks good. Right. But not too good. Because there has to be an edge to Will, whereby he is wanting Pauline. But in order to do that, he has to split apart the family. Yeah. How does he do that? Well, is he subtle about it? Where Marge isn't subtle, takes mm. a sledgehammer approach. Will is somehow a little more standoffish. Is, is he fundamentally a good person? Yes. Then? Are you looking for someone who uh, the audience can kind of relate to and maybe root for? Because yeah. when they see George, obviously the expectation is that George is generally this gruff kind of... Yeah. Hard to hard to like kind yeah. of character. Will is the anti George. So who else have we got then? What else can people be scrolling well, through and seeing the? We've mentioned Lil. We've mentioned Chloe. We've mentioned Will. Um, we've mentioned uh, Pauline. We've mentioned George. We've mentioned Sam. Yeah. Um, Harry and Marge. And, and Marge and Harry needs to be in there too. Yeah. That is our core. There are other people. That, we, that uh, if you don't fancy a, a, a large part within, within the play but would like to be part of it, then yeah. These are mostly female. So okay. uh, if we've got uh, women out there uh, who uh, of any age, any size, don't care. Let's, <laughs> let's have the works. I, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities for that here because we need natural looking women yeah. who, can, who can form part of, of the community. You didn't grow up around here, but I'm wondering if, you're, if you're, uh, your experience is the same. There is a real matriarchal force in the north of England. Mm. You'll find it in Manchester and, and, and Lancashire. You'll find it in Yorkshire. You'll find it uh, further north in Newcastle and, and, and beyond. Whereby, it, this isn't a patriarchal society at all. It pretends to be. <laughs> it, but the people who really make those decisions, make, uh, make the decisions in the household, make the decisions that matter to people, were always the women. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's tapping into to that sort of feeling. I can fully relate to that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. My grandma was definitively the, the matriarch of our family. She held the whole thing together. And it, in fact, when you describe Pauline, you kind of describe my grandma a little yeah. bit. Um, so More centred on the family. It, it oh, is all absolutely. about she the family. Was, she was the glue. Right. She was the, the leader. She was the person who made sure that everything kind of fitted together mm. and was all organised and sorted out. My granddad definitely was the breadwinner, was... Sometimes maybe a little bit as grumpy as George sounds, bless him. Yes. But deep down, everything he was doing was for, for the family. But my grandma, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Was the driving force. Driving force. So you have to say, matriarchy. That's yeah. the one that brings it in. And um, so that, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for matriarchs of all these different families. Yeah. And I want them to, to come together as, as, to be part of this. Uh, this. I'm not going to say chorus. It's not a chorus because each of them will have individual characters. Yeah, yeah. There are several people, for instance, who get invited to the uh, to a hen night, and uh, so I need a bride and I need her uh, her maids of honor, and the hen night goes disastrously, as, as, <laughs> as you'd expect, and they need to sing um, a song which I hope people enjoy singing. 
It's a song called Aren't We Outrageous? And it's what happens when women go on a hen night, have far too much alcohol and just lose all. I mean, do you want to hear it? I think we should. Let's hear, let's hear a bit of Aren't We Outrageous? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, good luck. Sounds like a night out in York. <laughs> <laughs> What a mistake Are we outrageous? She's built a cut Sup over her pick and mix Are we outrageous? We sent her packing And it wasn't gone six Just as she thought She was done for the night She got chucked out of the Uber Near to the red light The girls on the corner will see she's alright Are we outrageous? Marge, Deb and Trisha Road, stripping right to the buff Approaching the club She encountered the law The policeman was blushing Pushing her to the floor characters we've talked about the supporting characters the most important thing for us to know is a little reminder on where the auditions are going to be when they're going to be mm-hmm. and of course most importantly where can our listeners find the audition material to actually audition yes if you want to audition then you can uh, come along um, on april the 9th that's easter sunday and you can come along to the lawrence batley theater but you must get yourself an audition slot. And you can do that by going to www.richsykes.com and there you'll find a link to the audition page. You can download the audition material from there as well. All you have to do is tell us who you'd like to audition for and you can tell us on the comments page of richsykes.com and I'll forward that to Woodhouse for you. Anything else you need to know? I think that's it really, isn't it? I think that was a big episode, but we covered quite a lot of ground and and we had a listen to a few of the songs Mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll have built up a little bit of hype to get people in the mood to come and test out these characters. Yeah, be excited. I am. (laughs) (laughs) He's also quite nervous too. Yes! (laughs) I think everyone's going to enjoy themselves, aren't they? I hope so. Well... I think that wraps it up for today. And uh, yeah, we'll be back soon for episode two. Two. Brace yourselves for two. Well, we'll be discussing um, a a, a song. We'll be taking a song apart and saying, well, how the hell did it get to this stage? Because a lot of people don't understand how songs are written and uh, and, and how how they're formulated within a musical. So we're going to do that on the next one. Enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Right. Ta-ta for now. Cheers, Rich. Cheers, buddy. (laughs) 